Hi guys, Dr. Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon. Today you are going to catch part two of my reaction to The Resident, season one, episode one, The Pilot. In this part of the episode, the chief surgeon or the chief chair of surgery of a department in a hospital does the very first robotic prostatectomy. And this guy is quite a megalomaniac, so make sure you stick around, watch out what happens in the end, and learn, is this really accurate? Does this sort of thing really happen in the hospital? and what exactly is robotic surgery and when did we start doing it? Learn all that and more today. Make sure if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell if you don't want to miss my new videos every Monday. As you can see, the Titian is an amazing piece of medical technology. We've nicknamed it the hand of God because it does what no human hands could accomplish. Even yours? <laughs> yeah, even mine. <laughs> the finest surgeon in the world would benefit from the Titian. It's capable of movements that are incredibly steady and precise, virtually eliminating human error. All right, so let's talk about robotic surgery. They're showing some version of a robotic console and a robotic machine. It's somewhat similar to what we use in the operating room. We sit at a console, and the difference between what she's doing and what I do when I sit in the robotic surgery console is there is a special console where I look in and I can see 3D visualization of what's going on inside the body. There are arms, like they're showing there, um, that go into the abdomen in small little holes um, that is controlled, again, by little controllers, like she's showing, by our hands. It's not operating by itself. There is a surgeon sitting at the console who is doing all the motions of the robot. It eliminates any tremor that you might have. It allows you to have finer movements so you can see things in greater detail with the 3D visualization. And importantly in urology, it allows you to do minimally invasive surgery that you would normally need to do open because of the amount of suturing that's required. So sometimes you can use laparoscopy for surgery, which is where you use cameras and sticks inside those little portholes to, to do certain surgeries. But when you have surgeries that require a lot of sewing, that's very challenging to do laparoscopically. So the robot allows you to have seven degrees of freedom where you can actually use it exactly like your own hands. Individual surgical results may vary. I've trained for months to do this. Results will not vary. Until Bell gets his hands on it. Over my dead body. I'm sure Hodad can manage that. I had a nurse call him Hodad. What does it stand for? Hands of death and destruction. No, you're kidding. Does that mean everyone knows about his complication rate? All the nurses, some of the doctors, the ones who pay attention. Poetry. But none of the patients. They're clueless. You got the best hands in the business. But he's still the most requested surgeon in the hospital. Have you seen his reviews online? He has got five stars. <laughs> Top patient Make review. Dreamy is real. Make dreamy is real. You want to hear yours? Don't care. You got one star. Steer clear of Dr. Okafor. She told me my uterus sucked. It did suck. <laughs> so that's definitely the stereotype that surgeons can be blunt and straightforward. Uh, and then you meet some surgeons who are extremely charismatic. None of those things are reflective of your surgical abilities. So find out what your surgeon's outcomes are um, and how many times they've done a surgery before you decide to undertake surgery with them. And if needed, go ahead and get a second opinion. Uh, you don't have to stick with one person, even if you've met them, they're not gonna feel bad. Any good surgeon will tell you or encourage you to see a second opinion before making a big decision about surgery. Here you're gonna be the first patient to benefit from the Titian. Yeah, it's quite the honor. I have the damn thing practically operates itself. Have you met your surgeon yet, Dr. Okafor? Nope, not yet. She's Nigerian. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're in a visa. Very promising young resident. What do you mean, young resident? Well, second year, I believe. Randolph, I spoke directly to the CEO. I mentioned you, but she told me that Dr. Okafor was the best 
possible person to remove my prostate with a tissue. She'll be fine, I'm fairly certain. I want you. You're the chief of surgery. Don't you think I deserve the best? Yes. And I'll make sure you get it. Thank you. A robotic prostatectomy is a surgery that is done to remove the entire prostate gland, typically for prostate cancer. So just to clarify, residents don't perform surgeries independently. Even if she was the best robotic surgeon in the world, she would need to be overseen by an attending surgeon. So she could perform the surgery, uh, but she would need to have an attending who's overseeing her and be there and accountable for everything that she does. Um, typically in training hospitals, when you have residents, for example, if you came to my hospital, I work with residents and I will be in the operating room. I will do all the critical components of the surgery. And depending on the level of the resident, I will do more of the surgery or less of the surgery. And it just depends on where that particular resident is in their skill set. Have they done that operation before? Are they skilled enough to take a part of the operation or not? That's a judgment call that I make as someone who trains residents all the time. But I will tell you that you shouldn't worry because as someone who trains residents all the time, we are well aware aware and well equipped to hand over the reins when it's appropriate and take them back when it's not. So in this case, it's weird that he was saying that she's doing the surgery because in theory, he would be the attending surgeon and she would still be able to do the surgery with his oversight. I don't have time to give updates on how the surgeries went one by one. Are the families on the same Dr. Okafor, you have to talk to them each individually. There are rules about this. I get it. Lewis is doing fine. He's in recovery. <sighs> Rod is in the ICU, it's touch and go. Mm -hmm. Prescott's dead. Whoa, that is definitely not how we update families in the waiting room. This is totally not accurate. One, we ask families to typically join us in another room, particularly when you're talking about things like death. Um, you want to give them time, explain what happened. Um, and typically the resident wouldn't do that. It would be the attending surgeon who did the surgery who would update the family. Um, this is definitely not what you can expect if you're having surgery. Start with a simple maneuver. Four millimeter incision on the ventral surface. Slow and steady. I've got it. What the hell's wrong with the machine? It would be better for everyone if I do this. No. The patient asked for me. I'm always there for my patients. Just put that plum back on the table and let's get on with it. Round 11. Oh, for crying out loud! Okay, that is just crazy. So typically, um, the robot would never do something like that. Even if you made a mistake, you, you might move it a little bit, but it would never be like this, like hacking away at these fruits like they're showing. Um, but certainly it does require a learning curve. You do need to do robotic surgery. So when we learn robotic surgery, we have to spend a certain amount of time on a simulator before we can get on with a real patient. And when we do get on with a real patient during training, what we do is our, our attending would have us do the most simplest part of the operation where there is extremely unlikely to cause any harm. And once we've shown proficiency with that, then we take over other parts of the operation. You get a slow increase in your responsibility during the surgery until you've done every part of the operation from beginning to end by the time you've completed your residency. And sometimes depending on where you train, you'll be able to do the whole surgery from beginning to end. Um, so it takes many, many years. Surgery, in particular urology, I'm not sure if any of these are urologists, I think they're just general surgeons, but urology residency lasts from anywhere between five to six years and general surgery residency lasts from anywhere from five to seven years because it takes a long time to develop good surgical skills. Carefully peeled off the bladder. And the risk of rupture and bleeding is high in unskilled hands. possible. 
As you can see, the robotic instruments are smaller than your fingernails, but that blade is sharper than a number 11. This represents the union of human ingenuity and cutting edge technology. Man and machine are melded, working as one. So shady. All right, well, that's really shady. Again, would not happen. But let me tell you a little bit about the history of robotic surgery. So in 1994, they had the first robotic surgery. And this was basically a device that was able to control the camera of a laparoscopic surgery robotically. And so that was the very first robotic surgery that was done. In 2001, the very first robotic surgery was a robotic prostatectomy like they're showing. And this was using a system called the Da Vinci Intuitive System. Interestingly, it was originally developed as a tool by the US military to get surgeons outside of the battlefield, of dangerous battlefields, so they could perform surgery remotely. And the robot is actually a master slave system. And what that means is the actions of the master or the human are translated directly into the robot itself. Since 2001, there have been many upgrades to the robotic system that was originally developed so that now we are having better equipment that we can use to do robotic surgery and we're more efficient at it than we were back in 2001. There are also new robots being developed all around the world that may offer some competition to the current robotic system and may allow robots to be more widely used because currently they're very expensive to purchase and maintain. Well, that's it. Overall, this is the first time I'm watching The Resident. I found it to be somewhat entertaining, but very, very inaccurate. Uh, let me know what you thought down in the comments below. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss my new videos. And I'll see you next Monday right here, same time, same place. And always remember to take care of yourself because you're worth it.